Hi, welcome back to Apollo the Shire channel. A few years back, I made a saddle fitting video and I always felt like I can do better and it's been bugging me. Well, if you've been watching my videos and Apollo's physical transformation, then you know how much he's changed in the last few years. So it was time to get his saddle refitted as it no longer sat comfortably and was moving out of place during my rides which means I get another crack at presenting this video. It's really such an interesting process and I hope you enjoy riding along with me. The first step in the process is to measure the saddle's current size and compare it to the notes that were taken last time they were here. These two lovely people are Chris and Connie. They are Canadian, which makes them incredibly nice people by birth. They travel from barn to barn working with horses from all over. It's awesome. One of the good and equally bad things about Shleza saddles is that you can't just have anyone mess with them. All these saddle fitters are trained at Schleza and certified fitters. They have a very unique way and use really interesting tools in their process. The downside is only they can do it. So I actually had to wait about six months before I could get them to come to my barn. I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. They are very expensive saddles, but they're also some of the best. Regardless, I'm not sponsored. I'm just making a video because it's worth learning about and I wanted to share. Chris is always very methodical when working with Apollo, moving really slow, making sure he was okay, talking to him in a soothing voice, like here he's letting Apollo look at the tools he's about to work with. It makes horses feel safe and relaxed. Apollo's a pretty cool cat for the most part, so it takes a lot to ruffle his feathers, but it was nice to see how much care he has for the horses that he works with. He's not only good at his job, he likes it, and he enjoys the time with the horses. Probably level one. That's level one. Yeah. Okay. 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 I haven't even drawn the line and I can already no doubt the saddle's flying backwards. <laughs> 
He has changed. Chris would align his feet, and then of course, Apollo would shuffle them, and he would stop whatever he was doing, and with endless patience, he would realign his feet so that he could get a proper measurement, and then continue. And they played that game a bunch of times. This apparatus thing was really interesting. It looked like something out of BattleBots, designed by the late Grant Imahara. I was almost expecting him to press a button and for it to start walking away like an insect. Each leg could be adjusted independently with a protractor protractor measurement on each. Uh, you'll see a close up in a second. Chris was slowly tweaking each leg until they were all resting equally on Apollo's back. Each leg then giving a specific number, again to compare with numbers that were taken almost two years ago. That thing was awesome. Each time he made an adjustment, it would change just a little all the other legs. So he kept going back and forth, making subtle changes until everything was just right. This is what I was talking about with all the measurements on the sides of the legs. Zero, 10, 100, 100, 120, 120, 130, 130, 140, 140. I'll give you electronic numbers. Yeah. And then they did something called an electronic measurement. To be honest, uh, I'm not really sure what that does. I forgot to ask. Could be just a redundant number, but it seems like maybe it's measuring the angle or slope of the shoulder. And that was the last step before we could start messing with the actual saddle and evaluate what needed to be adjusted with it. Tree 
the angle of the scapula, and I can see my tree point in there, right there. Yeah. So you can see this, and this is like this. So we want we want to bring this arm out so that they're the same. Okay, so it's tight on the shoulder there. Yeah. Both sides the same. Okay. And look at my stirrup bar. It's facing upward. I want it to be parallel with the ground, so the front has to come down. I can get my whole hand plus another finger in there. Mm, right. So we can bring that down. And opening this up will bring that down. Yep, that's right. We'll bring this out, and that'll come down. And that makes sense is why it's being pushed back, because these huge shoulders are going to push the saddle back, because they're going to go, they're going to, no matter what, they're coming through. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. the saddle, saddle needs to have more room at the front. Okay. Everything else looks good. Billets are in a good spot. I always have to do some stuffing. It's going to get spread out. Okay. So give me a few minutes to do that. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me, um... This C-clamp thingy was really versatile. It's another one of the unique tools they use for their adjustments. He'll use it four to five different ways during this video. To open the tree, bending the bars, or straightening them. He puts the saddle upside down, sideways, forwards, backwards, to the left, to the right, every way except upright, I think, just so he can get all the right angles to press and stretch and move whatever it is that's needed to mold the saddle specifically to Apollo and his back. It's one of the, my favorite parts of the whole process. Stuffing here, is that what you said? Yep, that's right. So the stuffing always works its way to the middle just because of your leg on top of it. Yeah. So I always have to pull it out. We're gonna open it up big time. Sure. Okay, so right there, you can feel that. That's the stirrup bar. Yeah. That's the that's the bendable bar that we have in there. So I got it in the press, we're gonna big time open it up. Stop. Well, just, it. just touch. Just years and years and years and years of doing it. And then we'll put it on him and then we'll see how it looks. So we let the metal just kind of realign those molecules. Just like me asking you, how do you know how to paint like that? <laughs> <laughs> just, just head, eh? <laughs> okay, let's see how we do it. <laughs> His top line has come up. 90, 90, 120, 120, 130. He's now 100, 120, 130, 140. He's also gotten much bigger over the shoulder, but also nice and even over the shoulder and behind the shoulder, gotten wider. Okay. A little bit, those are fairly similar, but he's just super developed awesome. and that's really great. Can you show me your girth and your... We don't have extra large shoulder muscle on our board. No, no, no. no. <laughs> She's beautiful, eh? Yeah. So we got some sensitivity up here? Yeah, it's pretty drastic. 
it's yeah. crazy how much has changed. Yeah. Let me see the other side. Yeah, of course. The old store? A little on the left. Um, we're going to be back in August and again in November. See us a little more often. It's been a year and a half. So, uh, and with him changing and growing, as soon as you feel something is weird, calls. Because okay. he's changed significantly. Chris, I want you to look at the paperwork as well, please. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See how we're, we're getting better? Yeah. And I want it to be that angle. Come on, Dad. Put that tree point in there and match. Okay. Let's see it going. Flexible metal in there that you're... Yep, yep, it's a, it's a flexible, but it'll hold the shape. Yeah. It's not flexible, it's bendable. Bendable, right. yeah.
This next part is called, and I need to be careful that I pronounce this correctly, flocking the saddle. The material being used is sheep's wool mixed with synthetic fibers, and he's stuffing it in with what's called a flocking iron. They mix synthetics in with the wool because if it was 100% wool, it would compress and flatten. Absolutely. The synthetic fibers keep it spongy and light and fluffy. It took quite a bit of time and what seemed like a decent amount of force to stuff it all in there. And just watching his hands work with the iron, you can tell he's been doing this a long time and it's not as simple a thing as it appears. Also, like I mentioned before, these saddles are not cheap, so if he was to damage the saddle while performing this task, that would be problematic. So a deft hand is required, and it's evident he's got the touch. A lot of his job seems to be intuition and having a sense of what the horse needs and how much to give it or take away. Got some fill there, I got all that empty there. My full-time profession is, no, not movie director, I'm a fine art painter. And a lot of my subject matter is based on people at their craft. Norman Rockwell was a master at depicting American blue-collar life, and he was a huge influence for me. So every time I get to watch someone who is a master at his craft perform a certain skill, it's incredibly exciting for me. And in the back of my mind, I'm always composing what could be my next painting. I have several videos on my channel of paintings and painting time lapses, and some of those are paintings of Apollo. I will add links in case any of you are interested in seeing a little more of what I do. But watching Chris is one of those moments when I can see years of experience even in the most subtle movements. He knows what he's doing, and he's good at it. What's the material that you use to stuff it with? It's wool, wool, wool okay. from sheep, and uh, it has a synth some synthetic in there as well to keep it bouncy and fluffy. If it was 100% wool, it would get too hard. Oh. Almost like a wool felt. Hollow. Hollow. Hey. <laughs> hey. Good party. Hang on. So excited, I can tell. Yeah. Come on, let's get that thing fixed. Okay, that's much better. Okay. And I, um, mm. Stir bar is more level. Yeah. And your weight's gonna be on there too, so it's gonna sink down the pitch. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Let me just check the other side. Good. Okay, let's go for a spin. So just hack up as you normally do, please. And uh, with the pad, last thing. Yeah, with the pad.
Apollo is such a good horse. He was there for about an hour and he didn't mind and he didn't complain. As long as he's getting attention and the occasional treat, he's happy as a clam in sand. If every horse had a brain like his, the world would be a better place. So it was finally time to test the new fit. Chris and Connie wanted me to hop on Apollo and go through my regular warm up routine and they were just going to watch and assess what they see. They're not only watching Apollo's movement and how the saddle affects it but how I'm sitting in the saddle making sure I'm in the right spot and that he and I are balanced and comfortable. felt really different. All that widening Chris did was noticeable. Apollo's a big boy and already felt quite wide as it was, but this was definite change, but a positive one. He felt much more balanced, which made me feel like I was sitting in the right spot and not getting bounced around so much. Also, because the saddle was wider, my legs felt pressed into the thigh pads more, which helped me feel more stuck to the saddle and connected. standing statically because he drops his back and drops his belly, right? Um, so I wanted to make sure it was high enough in front for his withers. And again, I can see daylight all the way through. 
but if you walk, I'm gonna walk beside you. Okay. I just want to run my hands down there and feel his shoulder blade. Good boy. Oh yeah, beauty. Okay, let me take the other side, keep walking. Good boy. Be a little more clearance on that right side, Chris. Okay. Just a bit, the left side's bright. Okay, can we take it off and make another little change? Yeah. In. So right now the top of his girth is here, the buckles are about here, and his pectoralis muscle runs along there. So, and he's gained three inches of circumference. So just, this is a 28, he could use a 30 or a 32 even. Okay. But, um, so you want it to be higher? Uh, yeah, not quite that high. I want the buckles to be right where it boom, comes in, yeah. so right around there. It gives the most stability to the saddle and the least amount of pressure on the horse's body from the buckles. Little tips like what she was just giving me are great insights. And the more I learn about horses and horse care, the more I realize I don't know. A horse that's in pain or uncomfortable is not going to be as happy doing its job as it could be. But taking it a bit further than no pain and making a horse feel good and comfortable is, I think, one of the keys to having a horse that enjoys what they do and becomes a willing partner. A horse that in the moment that counts, say in a competition, just performs as expected. Which is really rewarding considering all the time and money that goes into keeping a horse and training it. So after the hand inside the pad test, Chris was back to the fancy giant C-clamp thingamajiggy to push the right side out just a bit further. And then once that was done, it was time for the final test ride. Yeah. I feel like 
is carrying the here. Yeah. yeah. And with this, um, without it sitting on those withers and that tightness and the sliding back, it's in a better, you look great, it's in a balanced position and it frees up this whole hind end again, yeah. right? Yeah. Because one of the sliding back, it was going too far back. So, it looks yeah, great. Yeah, a little bit more, because it's wider as well, obviously, I feel a little bit more grabbed on to. Yeah, um, good. With him, so. Cool, all right, we're happy if you're happy. If you wanna yeah. ride a little more, go right ahead. Okay, cool. And we'll start the other ladies. All right. And, um, and I just need to measure that before you put it away. Okay. The saddle. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Cool, have a good one. All right, thank you. So now, because the saddle was too narrow, as the ride would go on, his withers were pushing the saddle back as the ride would go on way too far back because it was pinching here. And now it can stay in the right place, but also because it's wider, I feel like um, my leg is more secure. This is a little bit wider and this pushes up. So it feels nice. He feels more one last victory lap and then it was time to let Apollo have the rest of the day off. His part of the job was done. He did great as always. I couldn't have asked for a better horse. Chris and Connie are very thorough in everything they do and are a great team. All that was left to do was take the final measurements of all the changes that were made to the saddle because they keep a record of everything and use it to track future progress. I was really impressed with how detailed their records were as well as how much they remembered from just one prior visit. Comments and facts that were not written down but not forgotten. And then of course, the very, very last step, pay for all the work and time that went into the saddle fitting today. Cause it's not even a little bit free. So I thought I would take the moment to say, I'm so grateful for all the subscribers and people who just love Apollo as much as I do. Every penny from this channel goes straight to Apollo for his food and care, vet visits and training. I don't keep any of it. It's for Apollo to have the happiest, healthiest life possible. So he and I are both very grateful for all the comments and well wishes and response that we've had from viewers like you. Thank you for watching.